Okay, so we're gonna do our recessed medicine cabinet. And uh, so it's 36 inches for the vanity. So we got 36 and a half um, because we're gonna have half inch drywall. So from that point, 18 is our center. Now we're having a sink that's offset. So our plumbing is on the left side of the cabinet with the sink, but in my mind, now there's, you know, it's all personal preference, um, but we're gonna basically have a 30 inch wide mirror, okay? And typically you always see mirrors completely centered over top of the sink. But since this cabinet is made with an offset sink, we're still gonna stay uh, center line with the cabinet itself and the sink will be what it is. Now, this particular um, medicine cabinet has a larger mirror on the left side and a smaller one on the left, so it will feel a little bit more centered, but it's not gonna be 100% 100% centered with that sink. And um, honestly, I don't think it's gonna matter because um, that sink is off-centered. The cabinet, you know, it's just the way it is. So I still would recommend just going center of your cabinet, so 18 inches. Now this was, this was our existing recessed medicine cabinet. The height of this is going, so the height of the vanity and overall height off the actual floor, just make it 36 inches. So 36, I would recommend leaving about 10 inches to 12 inches above the vanity. So if you made it four foot to the bottom of the mirror, then 26 is here. So then that leaves 15 inches of room. Typically I like to put my fixture. Now this fixture I would have to say is a little bit low, 10 and a half inches. On a ceiling height, this ceiling height is 91 and a half inches. So seven, you know, six something. So I would probably hug the ceiling a little bit more closely. So make the center of my fixture seven inches. You know, and it always depends on the fixture you're, you're installing because you might have some bigger drop ear bows on it that, you know, make it hug closer to the ceiling. But typically seven inches from the ceiling is probably the, the minimum height that you want to the ceiling. So our height would be 51 inches off the floor. Let's just make that our base. I think that works pretty well. Then we got 15 inches from the top. So if we went seven inches, that'd be, that fixture would be halfway in between there. I think that looks good. Um, that's what will make it. That's basically just about where they had it before pretty much. So they must've had a pretty much similar mirror size there. So we're gonna stick with that. Now, you know, this is something I had no idea until I open up this wall, but there's a recess mag cabinet on the other side of the bathroom. They're more concerned about this bathroom. So we're gonna get rid of that and then we're gonna make this rough in opening. This is uh, this is quite a mess when it comes to all this framing, but we're gonna cut it all out and redo it. So this is why I didn't realize it. It just had a plain door on it. Didn't even really pay attention to what exactly this was. So. As you can see, the recessed medicine cabinet. So we're gonna take this out of here and this is just gonna to have to be patched. Okay, so for right now, so I don't get anything in here. I'm just gonna tape this up. We'll put drywall on it afterwards. Okay, so we got this wire for the GFI. This is another problem with this recessed medicine cabinet. And in all intents and purposes, it could fit behind that medicine cabinet. But what you're gonna end up doing is tucking this uh, wire directly up against that drywall, which for the other bathroom is just a really bad idea because I could see somebody putting a towel bar holder or something from the other side and they're never gonna know that there would be a wire tucked up right against that drywall like that. So we're going to have to reroute it. I'm going to take it apart, pull it up. Hopefully I have enough. I don't probably not going to have enough lead. I'm going to have to put a junction box up in the attic. As long as it's accessible, that's all that matters when it comes to um, 
splicing a wire and attaching a new piece to this. So let's go ahead and take the GFI out and then we'll cut out all this framing. Okay, so we'll take this out for now. We'll just frame this up first and then we'll reroute the wire. There's no sense in trying to reroute that and then trying to guess where your framing is going to be. Twenty-five and a half. So plus three is twenty-eight and a half. So this will be our top cut mark. Make sure all these things kind of stay in line with the studs. work just fine so you got a little bit of wiggle room so if we cut that drywall right to the edge of that we'll be in good shape okay so I'm gonna route uh, this wire we'll have the junction because there's not gonna be any room so I'm gonna have to go up through here And we'll actually just come back down through this hole for my overhead lighting. Uh, one other thing I'd like to do for my overhead lighting. So we're going to be coming down as we planned seven inches. So I'm going to put a two by six flat against the back here. And what that'll do is allow me to just, um, I'm going to leave the wire loose in here and then um, just stick it out of the drywall. And then I can put a box and mount it into that two by four so, or two by six. But it's nice to have blocking behind your mounting box. I never really did like um, the drywall mounted boxes because all you're doing is really relying on that drywall. And some of these fixtures are heavy and they don't, um, they don't, some of them don't mount very well at all. So you really need a stable box for a lot of these cheaper light fixtures. And I mean, you can spend a lot of money on them and they're still kind of cheaply put together. So um, putting blocking is key to securing that.
So I hope this uh, demonstration helped you. I didn't scare you away from doing a recessed medicine cabinet, but I'm really a big fan of those Kohler recessed medicine cabinets. I'll leave a link down in the description below. Uh, but I hope this uh, had given you a little bit of indication of what it might take to put in a recessed medicine cabinet. Majority of the time, they don't just go in seamlessly. It usually always takes a lot of additional framing and moving of things. So uh, anyways, give me a, a like on this video if you can. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.